Hi, my name is Dr. Don Stinsma. I'm a practice in optometrist, and I've been practicing for 35 years. I'd like to share with you a short presentation about ocular surface disease. Ocular surface disease by Dr. Don Stinsma. What is ocular surface disease? Really, it's a group of several different conditions that all lead to red, tearing, and irritated eyes. OSD causes burning eyes, frequent tearing, foreign body sensation, red eyes, and sore eyes. There are three main causes of OSD, dry eyes, blepharitis, and meibomianitis. Dry eye is extremely common. The tear film consists of a thicker, watery, aqueous layer with a thin film of oil on top. If the oil is disrupted, the tears evaporate and the eye dries out. I diagnose dry eyes by observing the ocular tear film under high magnification with a dye called fluorescein. Fluorescein is an orange dye which glows blue when exposed to the black light. I can assess the tear film by observing the amount of dye present between blinks. Also, any cells that have been damaged by the dryness will absorb the dye and glow brightly. This is the view the doctor sees when examining a patient's eyes with the microscope and the fluorescein dye. Note the cornea has a bluish color from the dye. Also note the glowing spots in the center where the cornea has been damaged by dry eyes. There are four basic causes for dry eye. First is anatomical, cases where the tear drainage system is too efficient and the normal tears are drained away too rapidly, resulting in dry eye. This would be true in cases where the drainage canal is larger than normal, so the tears rapidly drain away. A second cause of dry eyes, and probably the most common cause, is inflammation of the tear gland. Due to inflammation, the tear gland produces less tears, resulting in a dry eye. A third cause of dry eye is the oil diffusion cases, where the oil glands and the eyelids become dysfunctional. The resultant oily tear layer is not adequate, and the normal tears rapidly evaporate away, resulting in a dry eye. A fourth cause of dry eyes is the aqueous deficient cases, where the watery tear layer is deficient. One cause of this condition is an autoimmune syndrome called Sjogren's syndrome. A second and much more common cause is reduced androgen hormone levels. Some men and many women over the age of 45 have this problem. Some medications also can make your eyes dry. Lubricating drops are the traditional treatment for dry eyes. They help, but relief does not last long, and sometimes there are reactions to the preservatives in the drops. Punctual plugs are very small plugs which are placed in the tear drainage duct. They prevent tears from draining away so the eye is not as dry. This is a painless procedure which takes only a few minutes and produces substantial improvement for many people with dry eyes. There are three types of prescription medications commonly used for dry eyes. The anti-inflammatory medication, Restasis, actively suppresses the inflammatory response rather than just passively lubricating the ocular surface. This helps many people. In severe dry eye cases, a mild steroid eye drop, most often Lodomax, may be used. In very severe cases, an oral antibiotic medication, doxycycline, also can provide help. Blepharitis is a second cause of OSD. Blepharitis is inflammation of the eyelid margins. There are two main types of blepharitis. Infectious blepharitis, which is caused by a chronic staphylococcus infection of the eyelids. This form tends to produce dry scales on the eyelids. Seborrheic blepharitis is found in patients with seborrhea or eczema of the eyelids. This form tends to create a moist looking crust. Note the scales on this patient's upper eyelid. The primary symptoms of blepharitis are itching, red eyes, burning, tearing, intermittent pain, and a foreign body sensation. The primary ocular signs of blepharitis are thickened and red eyelid margins with flaky crusts or scales. The crust and scales block the normal discharge of oil into the tear film, leading to increased evaporation of tears and dry eyes. Ocular hygiene is the mainstay of blepharitis treatment. Warm compresses for 10 minutes in both eyes once a week for up to four times per day. Daily eyelid scrubs with baby shampoo or commercial preparation. Antibiotic ointment, bacitracin, at bedtime for one to two weeks. In severe cases, an antibiotic steroid combination ointment, Torbridex, is used twice a day. In very severe cases, a systemic medication, doxycycline, 50 to 100 milligrams, is taken by mouth once a day. A third cause of OSD is mybomitis. 
In this condition, the oil glands plug up with thicker than normal oil. The lack of a normal tear film on top of the tears leads to excessive evaporation of the tears, causing dry eyes. Typically, it is seen as small yellowish domes at the lid margin. Gentle pressure often can express a thick oily white discharge. Note the plugged oil glands on the patient's eyelid. Mybomitis is treated with warm compresses for 10 minutes in both eyes once a week for up to four times per day. Daily eyelid scrubs with baby shampoo or a commercial preparation. An antibiotic azocyte is rubbed into the eyelid margins with the eyes closed twice a day for two days and then once a day for one month. In very severe cases, doxycycline, a systemic medication, 50 to 100 milligrams is taken by mouth once a day. If untreated, OSD will lead to continuing discomfort, red eyes, variable vision, and in severe cases, corneal ulcers and loss of vision. If untreated, OSD can lead to pinguicula, which are mounds of tissue that form a result of dryness and UV exposure, pterygiums, which are growth of fibrous tissue across the cornea as a result of dryness and UV exposure. They are a leading cause of blindness in some third world countries. Extreme dry eye can lead to corneal scarring and possible blindness. Ocular surface disease is the most common eye problem. Many people suffer with the eye irritation and blurred vision that OSD causes. There are treatments that really can make a difference, so if you have OSD symptoms, discuss your options with your eye doctor. I hope you found this presentation helpful and informative. Thank you.